How does sugar affect acne? A lot of times when people hear the word acne, they associate that with teen acne. However, that's not always true. In fact, we do see a lot of adult acne and adult meaning going into the ages 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and etc. In fact, it's not unusual for me to hear in our clinic when patients say something like, I've always had a beautiful skin and I don't know what happened now at the age of 65 or 75. I just suddenly started to break out. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Maria Zizian, a board certified general surgeon and IFM certified functional medicine physician. So a good question about the effect of sugar on our skin and on acne specifically is does sugar cause acne or does it trigger acne? And the answer is both. In some people who are very sensitive or and who eat a lot of sugar, it could be the major causative factor. In some other people, it could be something else that gets triggered by sugar. For example, they could have some issues with their gut, such as leaky gut, which we will discuss. And then sugar triggers exacerbation of acne. In either case, cutting down sugar, eliminating simple bad sugars always helps your acne. So today we will be talking about the main mechanisms of how sugar can lead to acne. But first of all, I would like to define a very simple, actually, um, definition is what contains sugar? What, what do I mean when I say sugar? Because it's not always obvious. So I'm going to list a few here. As you see, we have beverages and that includes soda, fruit juices with added sugar, sweetened teas and coffee drinks. For example, Frappuccino is really a dessert. That's a dessert drink. Energy drinks, which is horrible because of the caffeine in there too. Sports drinks with added sugar, usually there is. Then we have the second more obvious category, such as baked goods and snacks. And those are obvious things such as cakes, cookies and pastries, donuts, muffins, croissants, brownies, cupcakes, candies and, candy and sweets, uh, chocolates, especially milk chocolate. As you know, dark chocolate contains the least amount of sugar. That's why it's considered the healthiest version of chocolate. Uh, then we have hard candy, gummies and fruit flavored candy, caramels, lollipops, marshmallows, dairy products such as flavored yogurt with added sugar, sweetened condensed milk, ice cream, uh, sweetened milk alternatives. Then the next one is processed and packaged foods, it includes breakfast cereals, granola bars, sweetened oatmeal or instant oatmeal cereal bars, crackers and sweetened biscuits, sweetened nut butters with added sugar. Next, we move on to condiments and sauces. Those are actually hidden sources of sugar. We have ketchup, barbecue sauce, sweet salad dressing, sweet and sour sauce, teriyaki sauce, honey mustard, then bread and bakery products such as white bread, bagels, especially flavored ones, pancakes and waffles, all delicious things. <laughs> uh, next, we have canned and packaged fruits. Those have a lot of sugar, so always look for a low sugar variety in this because they do come in low sugar, um, such as canned fruits in syrup, sweetened dried fruits have tons of sugar, fruit snacks. And then we have in general sweetened snacks, such as sweetened popcorn, packaged sweet rolls and pastries, sweetened crackers and pretzels. And um, the list goes on with pop tarts and toaster pastries, pancake syrup, sweetened waffles. So as you see, there are a lot of uh, products that we eat that contain obvious sugar and some of them have hidden sugar. So what are the mechanisms of how it happens? How does eating sugar lead to acne exacerbation? One of the things that happen when we eat sugar, our blood level glucose increases and that stimulates production of insulin. And I think most of us, most of you know that. So insulin, as the levels of insulin increase, insulin by itself can trigger indirectly acne exacerbation through production of androgen. Androgens are essentially male hormones that women produce as well. So those androgens are testosterone and DHT, dehydrotestosterone. And what happens 
androgens, both of them, they do affect the sebum production, which is oil production of our skin, making the skin oilier if there's too much androgens. If there is a good level, normal level of androgens, that does not happen. But when there is too much of androgen, then you have oilier skin, you're more prone to acne breakouts. So that's one of a common mechanisms, indirect effect of insulin on our acne production. The other effect of insulin, which is basically effect of eating simple sugars, uh, the other effect is that insulin triggers production of insulin-like growth factor 1. It's called IGF-1. And IGF-1 is produced by your liver. And IGF-1 directly has influence on your skin, a direct influence on your skin. It increases the skin cell turnover. So when there is too much of it, then it becomes more inflamed and also can lead to more sebum production. So a lot of common commonalities between insulin and IGF-1 is that they lead to increased sebum production. And in the case of insulin, a lot of it is through androgens and IGF-1 could have a direct effect on the skin as well. So that's a hormonal effect on our skin. Of course, you may ask, what about estrogen? And um, it's, it's a very interesting topic to talk about uh, the effect of estrogen on our skin. It probably deserves another a separate video because it's not so much estrogen by itself. It's the correlation and ratio of estrogen to progesterone that often causes disbalance. And that disbalance also leads to acne. And that's what we uh, commonly call a hormonal acne. So the next mechanism that is important is a leaky gut or a, a problem with gut permeability. What happens is that sugar affects bacteria in our gut. And as you know, there are a variety of bacteria and, uh, in our gut, and some of them are beneficial, which are very important. And some of them, they are neutral. They could sometimes become pathogenic under certain circumstances. So what sugar does, it affects the beneficial bacteria. And because it disrupts the microbiome, the micro life in our gut, it causes our gut to become more permeable to toxins and to uh, badness, to something that's not good for us. So instead of fully protecting us and not letting these bad toxins get into our bloodstream, the gut becomes leaky, it becomes permeable. And that's why these toxins from what we ingest, something that would have come out, would have been excreted. Now it's being absorbed into our bloodstream. And that, of course, by itself stimulates inflammation. And that inflammation is also correlated with a bacteria th that is considered responsible for acne breakouts, such as Cutibacterium acnes, very interesting name. It used to be called Propionobacterium. Now they changed the name to Cutibacterium because that's bacterium that's implemented in the breakouts of our skin. And when you have problems with your gut, it manifests in your face because our face, our acne presentation or whatever the problem is basically the mirror of the inflammation that's going on in the gut. Um, another way that immune system is affected in acne breakouts is through general inflammation because what happens is that sugar causes inflammation of the whole body. Today, we're talking about skin, we're focusing on acne, but if we were talking about obesity, I would have said the same thing. Sugar creates an inflammatory state in our body because it affects lots of hormones. We're, we're just focusing on a very small area today. So that inflammation is manifested by production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Those are spe special inflammatory mediators that actually make your body angry and activate your whole immune system on many levels. So on the skin, you can see it. You can see it in some other places that it's going on because it's hidden, but on our skin, unfortunately, it's all obvious. So you have uh, increased of redness, you can have some swelling, you can have the cystic acne act, uh, act up with the cyst getting cooler and bigger. They can even get 
fully infected at that time. So that's a, a full-blown inflammation. So it's a direct inflammation of the sugar as well. I also have to remind something that we've discussed in previous vi videos, but it's such an amazing fact that I, uh, I think I've repeat, I'll repeat myself again, that 70% of our um, immune system is housed in our gut. That's why we can't ignore what we eat just by that alone to understand this correlation between what we eat, by, between our gut health and between our skin. It, I think that it's um, sort of irresponsible to deny that correlation. So, um, so the bottom line, unfortunately, as delicious as some sugary um, foods are, they do affect our whole body and lead to problems. And today we talked about in inflammation, uh, leaky gut and hormonal response as mechanisms of how sugar affects um, uh, affects our face and triggers and sometimes causes acne. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. If you enjoyed today's topic and if you love functional medicine the way I do, please feel free to check out my book that is now available on Amazon. It's called The Clear Skin Diet, Unlocking the Secret Link Between Food Sensitivities and Skin Health. The link is below. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.